Interesting. All right, we're live. We can talk about uh, talk about. I think we're gonna talk about seven and eight today. That's the plan, at least. You ready? Ready to go whenever you are. Well, let's hop in. I don't uh -huh. think I have any slides that are in like any particular order. I think I did it just on characters. So like the first one just shows Azula. I think. I think that's how yeah. I have it set up. Uh. Yeah, they're just they're just I just have them as characters. Um, so it's going to feel a little disorganized for me at least because I usually rely on the slides heavily to like keep myself in order and I didn't I didn't That's do that <laughs> I know they go to like the Northern Water Tribe and let's see yeah so I think episode 7 starts out with uh it, it starts with Iroh um, and Zuko and kind of their crew. I think it's at the end of episode six, I believe, is kind of when they have that moment for Zuko uh, where his crew truly kind of turns to him. Uh, it's kind of what we talked about in the last episode. And uh, General Zhao is in... in his people are trying to plant distrust or a plan of motive uh, in Prince Zuko's ship uh, and his crew. And so, like, his l lieutenant goes and, and has, like, tea and plays a game with General Zhao's lieutenant. And uh, they have their, like, conversation, and he tries to plant, like, this misconception um, and then that lieutenant comes back and tells Zuko the plan of how they're, you know, going to come for him that night. And so they're trying to get him to go off onto that boat, which has got the explosives on it. I'm pretty sure that scene is right at the beginning. Yeah. So that was kind of their, their character arc. And then, um, right. I think Admiral Zhao, like. He tricks Lieutenant G, right? Isn't that what isn't that what happens? They like they know he's yeah. over there to like quote unquote spy or whatever to flush Zuko mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And then I think Zuko sees the blasting jelly or whatever they call it, uh, right at the last second, but Iroh doesn't know that and he ain't he ain't happy about it. No. Um And then I don't I don't remember what happens next. Uh, I think it's, we either cut, I know that we cut a lot to Azula, um, especially, yeah. especially that towards scene, the end. to, um, the crew, not the crew, but, uh, to like Aang and Katara and, and uh, Sokka and them getting to the Northern Water Trap. Yeah. So like I... I did get a, a screenshot of the Northern Water Tribe because I thought it looked really cool. The big giant tower and yeah. like all the all the fires and like the I mean it's everything's within walking distance. It's like all the all the shows and stuff where the town is like small enough to walk from place to place is really nice because you don't get that in this day and age. So it's it's nice to. <laughs> I I imagine my you know how nice would it be to just walk to wherever you need to go unless you're like a hunter or something. But, no, absolutely, I absolutely love what they did with the Northern Water Tribe and just how it looked. You know, it felt better. It 
it felt much better than the the movie that they did like ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. We meet. Uh, we get to meet. Uh, this is this is Saka Saka's picture that I took of him uh, seeing UA for the first time, and uh, <laughs> I thought I I thought I captured it pretty well, like. A lot of the a lot of the expressions in the show, I keep talking about it. Like we've mentioned it more than once, but the facial expressions are what gets me. It just adds that adds that little bit of touch that you can't really get from animation. And I I just I keep focusing on that because all the other stuff is all the other stuff is directly related to the animated series, and that causes. You know, that's those are all in a, in a lot of ways. The live action has a hard time competing with the uh, animated, but where I think it shines is adding stuff that wasn't in the show and this, where the you know where the facial expressions really really make a difference. You know, the costumes. I know a lot of people gave uh, UA grief for her wig. That she's wearing because I don't think that's her natural hair, but yeah, you know I I don't really care about that. I I just I want to enjoy the show for what it is, and I thought their scenes especially were really good, like the way they interacted with each other. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I agree. I think that they did a, a really good job with their relationship, um, in the two episodes that they had. And, and even dropping that little hint and uh, that little, what's the word for it? Uh, flashback uh, of what, Sako, you know, what, is that which what? I think they hint at in maybe the next episode. I don't remember if it's in seven. These, um, these two episodes blend together really strongly for me. Like I have a hard time um, splitting the two in any meaningful way. Like they feel like one big episode, I guess. Yeah, because uh, there's stuff that happens. There's stuff that happens that overlaps. Like we've got uh, the arc of Sokka sure. and UA, and then um, I know that we have the big, the big uh, fight with Katara and what is it? Paku is his name. Yes. And I really looking forward to like doing some kind of edit um, with that. So I do want to talk about Katara and Paku. And uh, I I was really surprised, and we can stay on episode seven as much as we can remember. But I was really surprised at how emotional the the show was when we got towards the end, when the when Katara was telling uh, Paku that you know the we're here, we're here to help, like let us help. And he's like, who's us? And then all the, it pans down to like all the women in the tribe that were waterbenders. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was really good. I got, that was you know, an awesome moment. yeah, it was kind of, you know, it was kind of cheesy. It was like, he couldn't see the women until the camera panned that direction. But you know, <laughs> yeah. like it yeah. still, it was, it was a really good moment. Like the, whoever did the, whoever did the, the direction for that scene did a really good job. I think. Absolutely. I thought that there was a lot of shining moments in these two episodes, uh, especially coming off of, I would say, kind of the lull of the season. Yeah. You know, this it was nice to see it finish strong. Right. Um, and I think I think ep episode seven was a great episode that set up the great finale. Like you said, there's a lot of crossover, a lot of things overlap. Uh, but I think it did a really good job of building anticipation. Um doing a lot of things right that the movie got wrong and and mm. preparing for the finale i i enjoyed it yeah uh i did take uh i mean we've got a lot of uh things going on to prepare for this like i think uh, there's a discussion uh between admiral zhao and i don't again i don't remember if it's in seven or eight but it's in one of the episodes where uh, Zhao basically 
says, who do you, who do you think came up with all this plan? Who do you think, uh, orchestrated all of this? And, uh, and then we like right after that scene or whatever, it cuts over to Azula being, being Azula and Azula's, I don't remember her orchestrating all that in the animated series. But either way, I I enjoyed it thoroughly. Like to me, it was it was fresh enough that I was like, "Oh shit, that's one evil bitch." Uh, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> and I think uh, one of this definitely one of the scenes in this episode because I have a screenshot of it is her like fighting benders. Like they just capture benders and make make her fight them. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh that's episode seven. Yeah. Um and yeah, you kind of see that the the kind of pressure and responsibility. I think a really good thing that the show focused on it, and I think that this is a thing that people need to remember is this is an adaptation, not a one for one of the show. But I think this live action adaptation focuses more on grief and responsibility mm -hmm. and the cost of war um i think the live action focuses a little bit more heavy on the darker side of this story not you know overzealous about it but they do put a little bit more focus there and so you get moments like this where you see uh you know her fighting the benders and in front of her dad um you know zula's feeling like you know what what more does she have to prove to him and he's trying to teach her a lesson um that you know she's just not quite grasping yet until he unleashes this you know savage out in the field um you know you see that with uh zuko and iro you see it even with katara her grief um you know and, and we'll, we'll get into that all down the line but that's just kind of an over arching theme that I think this live adaptation focused on. And I think that with this scene right here, where it was fighting the benders in front of her dad and, and trying to show him over and over that she's the best when everybody in the crowd knows she is the best. Um, and he's just still not accepting that level. He's like, you're not, you're not reaching my expectations. Um, was a really cool, powerful moment. Right. And, and builds to her villain persona yeah and i think they they take a break and and cut over to like the gang or to zuko or something but then we come back and she's fighting another another bent or he wants her to fight another bender and then she refuses and then he like ozai like stands up and he's like well who are you to deny me and she like goes the, the cut of the, the video portion of this is really sick like the the motion of her um, drawing, drawing the on the yeah, getting the lightning together the first time on screen was really good. Like I, it was amazing. I like this. These two episodes were my favorite. I think besides uh, the Kyoshi one, because they they did Azula really really well. Like they captured her determination and. Uh, like, I think she like fires lightning over Ozai's shoulder and says, "You know, this this isn't fighting these benders isn't worth my time. I want to go, I want to go out." And I think Ozai. That's when Ozai says, "Yeah, go ahead." Yeah. And I that, think, that was a powerful moment. I think this is the face of him, like seeing what she's. Like she finally stood up for herself and said, "No, I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go do my thing." And he's like, "Hell yeah, that's now, the now you're getting it. That there's my baby, my baby girl." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, she's she's a savage, and uh, you know I'm excited to see because we don't get to see her uh, in the finale fight. You know, which I mean, obviously she's not there, but just knowing what's to come in, in season two because general zhao is you know that book one villain and then season two is the azula kind of accompanied by the what's left of zhao um 
Does he survive? But, ma but mainly Zul. I Zhao, thought he did. Is Zhao all the way through the whole series, or I don't I don't remember. We'll have to see. I thought there was a lot of scenes with him, at least in the show, where he was teamed up with Azula, and Azula was kind of like mm. running the show, and then eventually it gets to where it's Azula and her gang. Um, oh yeah, Tylee and May or whatever. Yeah, but I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let's see. Uh, I actually don't want to necessarily go back and watch the animated series. I like like if they come out with another live action, I think I'm just gonna watch it and not, you know, not not go back and watch the ep the animated. Just because I like the way they're doing it, like I don't want to feel like it's. Um, Painted. If there's something from the animated series that they put in there, you know, kind of like the cabbages thing, I'll recognize it, but I don't remember enough of the animated series to to gripe if they don't get something perfectly right. As long as it feels right, that's that's the feeling I want when I watch the show. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I I think I was wrong. Now that I'm looking it up, uh, I think Zhao does die. Uh, by the moon spirit it happens differently uh in the animated series because the moon spirit actually picks Zhao up um mm. and zuko tries to save him versus in the show it's uh you know iroh shooting him in the back when when zuko clearly beats him and is walking away right zuko's trying to be the bigger man Zhao. Yeah. gets up and tries one more one more attack and then Iro blasts him. Yeah, it did. Dragon of the West. Yeah, he don't fuck around, my boy. No. Um. And so then uh, we do get the fight between Katara and the uh, Water Bending Master in the end. Um, which I I don't know. How did you feel about that Water Bending fight? I was thinking about that when I watched it because, like, the best way I can put it is that it feels slow, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, I feel like if they, I almost want to, like, take the animated, or this, take this battle in particular and speed it up, like, in a video editor. I just want to speed it up and see what that feels like because, like, and this could be related to kind of like the facial, exp the over the top facial expressions that you can do in the animated series. Uh, it's, it's probably something similar. You just can't physically make real people move as fast as they move in the animated show. But yeah. like animated battles always feel real snappy and real, real like instant reaction and like, the, the motion is always way faster and I, I it feels more like a battle this this seemed um, this seemed like like slow like the stuff that they were doing to each other probably the best the thing that felt the best was probably when she was launching those ice discs at him that felt nice and quick but everything else like pulling the water out of the out of the fountain that felt slow like every everything felt like too uh almost lazy i guess is the best way i can put it that makes sense yeah it makes sense for sure i i can i could see the point you're trying to make and and i agree to an extent um i think it's like you said it's really hard to try to adapt uh what they do in the animated series it just looked kind of funky like for some reason the scene where she's like sliding she turns the water into like an ice wall mm. and slides across it it kind of looked a little funky you know like a bad skateboarding trick or something um but yeah like when she shot the darts at him that looked great the ice wall looked great whenever he like wrapped her uh in ice mm -hmm. uh there, there was some good moments, but it felt like it had really good intentions. I liked what they were trying to do. It just felt like the execution was a little off. Similar to like the acting, like they're saying the right lines, they're in the right place, they look the right way. The delivery is just a little off for me. 
that's how I felt with that water bending fight. It's it's almost like, um, and I again that's why I said it felt slow. Is is yeah. your like the live action creators are reaching like the uncanny valley of of show creation and. I don't know if you're familiar with the Uncanny Valley, but it's like anything that looks uh, close to humanoid, but is off a little bit. Like people in general, like humanity as a whole is really good at like seeing something. Picking up on that. Yeah, like picking up on the differences and it makes them feel uncomfortable. And that's, I feel like the live action show creators are reaching that that point where they're so close to getting it perfect but because of that it's more more unsettling for people that are watching it like it's close it's really close but it's like you said it's not quite there and it's unsettling and i i think you're right the cgi is almost perfect but that little bit that's off where the where like paku does some kind of um, he does some kind of slide thing also where he slides past Katara or something like that. It looks it looks fake, but like objectively it was a good it was a good uh, good CGI. It just wasn't wasn't quite there, and I think it was because yeah. it was too slow. It could just be that it's so close to being perfect that. We're just picking up on it, and it feels uncomfortable. Not sure. Yeah, I think I think you're right with it being slow. Um, I mean, that's how it looked when she was sliding down the ice. It doesn't look like the the physics of it look off. Yeah, like the, gra- not, the gravity. Not drastically. Yeah, but like you know, it feels like if she's standing on ice and sliding down, like her body should be moving much faster than what it is. It looks slow, like you pointed out. Right. So I agree with you. I think that, that that is what uh what we're seeing there. Um, geez, it says we didn't get to see any progression of Katara's water bending. She just went from um just went from reading the scroll to being a master, and I agree. We didn't. That was one of the big complaints is we didn't get to see Av uh, Aang practicing with Katara and Katara getting progressively better. Like we didn't get to see her bend a lot on screen. You know, we kind of get hints at it, but it's not, it's not all there. And it did, it did feel off to me. You know, they didn't put a priority on demonstrating her, her skill increase, I guess. Yeah. I think that, uh, Sorry, let me move the mic closer. Something that me and you touched on in the last episode that I, I kind of been thinking about is that if you look at this show, statistically, the live adaptation has more screen time than the actual Avatar show. But yeah. in the Avatar show, they were able to move at a much quicker pace. Uh, one, because they had the availability of using anime and not live sets and being able to do things that humans are just not capable of doing right uh but they were able to wrap up stories a lot quicker and they were able to throw like little you know like a little 15 second clip of them at the river you know doing water bending and then proceed through a 10 minute story and wrap it up five minutes in the end or something and there and there's your episode i feel like unless the live adaptation is to go to 22 23 minute episodes or something like that there's going to be a lot of things left out right and i think the show is going to get better at that i agree with them i i feel like they left that out we're missing that that's an important part of the story but i think that those are going to be some challenges that are going to come is there's going to be things that are left out of the story i think for me that's just when when the live adaptation does something they better knock it out the park because they're gonna they're they're gonna take something away so when you do give me something it better be perfection that's kind of my expectation when i watch the show and i think that's i'm okay with something being being out but like the conversation we had with iroh and um zuko they spent more time on fleshing that out i absolutely loved it yeah yeah i 
I did too. And you know, it's the stuff that they're focusing on is really good. And I feel like they're getting not unnecessary hate, but maybe a little too zealous. And, um, you know, if they, if they ever took feedback from anybody, uh, I would, I would try to emulate the 20 minute episode, like feeling by doing, by doing a, a couple arcs an episode, you know, like we could, we could go back and, and watch, or I, I, I mean, even like the very first episode, I thought they did a good job. I didn't even realize that the animated series was 20 minutes each. When I watched the, when I rewatched this, uh, this live action for the first time, I watched it and episode one felt really, really good. Nicely paced. Things were happening. There were, there were, um, you know, everything felt good. And then when, when I go to watch the animated series, I didn't even, it didn't even register that they were short episodes. I thought that's how the animate, like I, it felt so good. And so then when we get to like these, these other episodes, it's starting to feel like the pacing is getting off and I, I think they could do better. It's probably not the vision that they have. Um, and you can't please everybody, but you know, it, they can do it cause they did it for episode one. It just, I think it's yeah. just a matter of like how, how much of a priority is it? I guess. They're not consistent with it. <clears throat> like right. you said, Right. In episode one, they did three episodes in an hour, and that is almost exactly the right time span to go through three episodes for the animated series. But then they turn around in episode two of the live action, and they spend an hour on Kiyoshi Island, which is one 20-minute episode. Maybe bleeds into two episodes a little bit, but still, they drag something out drastically longer, and they did a right. good job at it. Right. But then they turn around to the next episode, and they mash, like... I, I would say consistently probably three to four episodes in one hour long episode, but they're pulling from like different timelines. And so now it's, it's getting weird because we go from a good pace to dragging out the pace to speeding up the pace again. But not only are we speeding it up, we're pulling different timelines into places that they don't belong. And so now it feels really out of whack. Um, compared to whenever you watch the animated series that the pacing is consistent all the way through. Yeah, I I think you're right. I think the consistency between like if they're going to do if they're going to do hour long episodes with three animated episodes in each one, I think that would have been fine. I think that if if they had picked um if they had picked eight episodes from the animated series and stretched them out to an hour long I think that would have been fine with like flashbacks to the other the other arcs of the of the episodes. I think they could have done that. I think I think you're right. I think probably what feels not bad but doesn't feel good about it is that they're not consistent with their approach, I guess. Like, yeah. Feels I, re I really wish they would have just kind of like you said stuck with that first episode's mentality of we're going to do three animated episodes per one episode and you just stick to the truth of what that is. Um, right. Rather than mix and mash. And even though I, you know, the fan favorite was Kyoshi Island and that was the one episode that they dragged out, but you can't do that for every single episode. So stay consistent. Yeah. I mean, it... I, I would give that up for overall consistency. Yeah, because they could have done the introduction to the Avatars episode one like they did. And then they did Kyoshi Island. And then uh, I don't know how important the trip to the spirit world and confronting Ko, I don't know how important that was. I, it feels like it wasn't like very impactful to the overall, the overall like storyline to get to the end of the you know, season three or whatever. Like, I know Aang has to get caught so that Zuko can save him so that they can fight. But no. I, I, I feel like, um, I feel like that whole, 
drawn out trip to the spirit world was probably, you know, maybe something they could have made a little shorter and focused on yeah. focused on something else. I agree. I do. I do think you know, on the uh, <clears throat> surface level, that side quest is a bit underwhelming um, for the overall story. But I think it does. Excuse me. Do a lot of important things for the show overall. One, it's the first time you're really introduced to the spirit world. Secondly, it establishes more of a past with Aang because it's almost like in the real world, Aang has these life cycles all the time and each avatar is individual. But in the spirit world, it's almost as if they're treated as the same person. I think that's mm -hmm. the first time you see Aang responsible for the sins, if they're sins you want to call it, let's just say actions, he's responsible for the actions of his past life. You know, even though he had nothing to do with that. Uh, wow. And also the spirit world comes into play at the end of season one. So yeah, if you're to go to the true. finale and never see that, it wouldn't have, I don't think, as much of an impact as it does because they put that little side episode in. That's fair. I think, yeah, that's fair. I think you're right. Um I just, I mean, maybe what I meant was that we just don't spend so much time on it, I guess. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, so just kind of browsing through what I, what I see on my slides for eight is I've got Sokka and then um, apparently I'm skipping to Aang inside the inside the thing and then uh, Azula with her little Fire Nation gear on and we've got Katara, Katara and Aang fighting Iroh being mad Zuko looking a little confused yeah, but, so let's break this down. How, how did you feel about the episode being <clears throat> essentially an hour-long fight? I I read a lot of Brandon Sanderson. I read a lot of Robert Jordan. I I love overly long, complicated fights. I I agree. I, I thought it was a good choice. I, I, I like it as well. Oh, sorry. Continue. No, I, I'm just saying I, I like it. Everybody, you know, in gen, in general fights like one-on-one -on -one fights can be over pretty quick, especially if there's a distinct difference in skill level. But to me, it felt like they ramped up, um, <clears throat> like not, not power up or anything, but they, they increased what was happening at a good pace. Like the, you start off with like uh, the gang wiping out one ship, and then they get a get their bearings and find out that there's a whole freaking fleet. Like, oh, you know, what are we gonna do about this? And then the you go back to like the water tribe. They're saying they can defend anything, and then we find out that you know Admiral Admiral Zhao has this plan to you know kill one of the spirits. To give them the advantage like I, I just i like the pacing of all the like uh, move and counter move kind of like it felt kind of like a game of chess and i i like that a lot yeah. i feel like that's one of the benefits you get with a live action hour-long episode versus a 20 minute um animated because animated fights seem to feel rushed for me yeah, you know, you're watching everything high intensity, high action, and it's all over pretty quick. Uh, except for the finale that they did in season three, where they really dragged out that whole battle between him and, and Ozai, uh, Aang and Ozai. Right. I I do like this uh, format that they did, where it's an hour, because uh, war is complex, and I feel like that's the overall theme that the live action kind of took is is cost of war, and they showed it on many sides. Um, you know, and also times of tribulation bringing out the best of people, uh, like where you see the 
Master Waterbender change his ways about women bending and, and participating in war because uh, they needed them and, and they right. made an impact. Right. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. I I enjoyed that too. I mean, it was a, it was a touching scene. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to not not having them not having the scenes in like sequential order so that I can jog my own memory is making me forcing me to be a little a little uh more introspective about what I want to talk about because usually I have the scene to like jog my memory of where we're at in the story and now I'm kind of kind of in a position to think about like what's actually happening in the show. I'm not sure I like that, but I mean, it, it is, it is a challenge and I, uh, I like challenges in general. So I know, uh, we've already talked about like the, this is the scene, like where the, all the waterbenders are like, uh, they want to, I titled the slide, all the single ladies. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're all here to help. And we already talked about that. And then I briefly mentioned Admiral Zhao's plan. And I just want to say that, like, if, like the prop development for the show is great. Like, this balloon, the, sh the way the ship looks, the uniforms, uh, like, Azula's uh, uniform. Like, all that stuff looks great. Uh and I, I just, I like the props. The props look really nice. Yeah, I think they did a great job with that. And that's really what helps make you feel like this has the essence of the true show of the animated series. Because it all looks the way it should versus when you got the movie, things look different. Like Aang's uh, arrow looked different. The the way they pronounce the names look different. Some costumes and sets looked different. Um, Appa looked really funky. Did he? I, it, uh, I never watched it, so I don't I don't have any context. I believe you though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you go look up some pictures of it, and it looks it looks it looks pretty wonky. Uh, but that, that's just what I'm trying. I'm trying to agree with you. I I really do feel like they knocked it out the park with. Uh, the set and costume design. Um, we talked about the fight being long. I know that um, one of the things that threw me off, I guess, was... And it didn't really throw me off. It was just kind of hard to follow without re-watching the animated series. I feel like they didn't explain a lot about what was going on with um with Aang when he was inside the inside the spirit like i I've, that felt sh like a stretch and i you know i i'm not not really sure why it felt that way like i knew it was going to happen um but like watching it after not seeing the animated series in so long it felt um felt like a stretch like I knew that Zhao was gonna try to kill one of the spirits and I knew that he did and I knew like I knew all this stuff was gonna happen and even still it, it felt hard to follow I don't know if you got that impression or not I'm just telling you how I felt yeah I mean I think uh that's one of the complications you run into with live action versus animated I think like that point you made earlier where when something you're watching real people and something looks so close to being real, it makes you feel icky. Yeah. You know, you watch stuff versus watching animated series, you know, they do a lot of wild shit and you just accept it because that's, that's a foo-foo world. It's not real. Uh, so if some little boy just jumps in the belly of a beast, you're like, okay, yeah, I don't see any red flags here. That's but when you watch an actual kid do that, in this animated monster, you're like, something feels weird about this. I feel like maybe that might be what, what you're talking about 
for me, I didn't, I'm kind of struggling to understand what you mean by uh, it felt stretched to you, other than um, the assumption that I'm, I'm taking is that seeing it felt weird. Because for me, I mean, I knew, like you said, I knew it was going to happen. I was waiting for it. it. I felt like it was weird to see Aang in this kind of state uh, because everything looks so real when you look at him other than like his face glowing. And he's in this like rainstorm inside of a sea monster's body, the moon spirit's body. I don't know. I I guess I guess what I was trying to say is like the mechanics of how, like how did Aang know that whenever he did what he did, that he was giving up, like the. The mechanics of what he did weren't explained very well. Aang just seemed to know that if he did this, he was going to die. Or or whatever. Like, it wasn't... It wasn't explained well. And the concept that you were talking about is uh, suspension of disbelief. And that, that happens a lot in uh, writing, where you... If you... You have... Uh, like, if somebody's reading a new book... And the book is, you know, in, say, like, set in, like, the 1930s. And, uh, you know, all the technology from that time and the author's writing and writing and writing. And then, like, if, like, halfway through the book, now magic is a thing with no buildup to it at all. No hints or clues. Then a normal reader is going to be like, where the hell did this come from? And that's, that's the feeling that I had is that there was no, no buildup to Aang jumping inside this monster, um, allegedly sacrificing himself forever to get revenge. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was still a good scene. I also really liked the way they did this, uh, like where you could, see him uh, they like uh showed him like taking steps inside the monster while the monster was taking steps i thought that was cool and uh just how strong this creature was was nice to see too like he obliterated everybody <laughs> yeah, he's just taking those catapult shots to the dome yeah he didn't care no um let's see I was trying to get to I don't I don't know if I I mean we already talked about him killing the fish or whatever but yeah Again, like that, I enjoyed the episode. Don't get me wrong. Just some of it felt hard for me to hard for me to follow. Um, but I I did want to talk about uh, Azula being a crazy person because I think uh, I think this is the episode where Zhao tells Zuko like, "Who do you think contrived this plan?" To begin with, who do you think essentially got him promoted? And like, she is uh, batshit insane. She's conniving as fuck. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's just a little psychopath. Um, that that was all. That was all I had for for these two episodes, you know, we kind of, I think we talked about UA, we talked about Sokka. I do know that they, they kind of, uh, it felt a little forced, but they did show like Sokka's leadership when they were attacking that very first ship at the beginning of the episode where, uh, -huh. uh he's like, you go here, you go here. We'll, you know, we'll take down this ship together. And the, the other two just kind of followed along and then, they came out victorious, and uh, you know, I Sako 
wants to be a leader and I just I like that they kind of give him that chance to do that and it seems to be working yeah I feel like everybody got their their uh I don't want to call it like a climax moment their their hero moment like you pointed out with with uh Sokka he got his leadership moment mm -hmm. which is what he strive for all like uh all season long, I feel like Katara got her moment to show that she's worthy. You know, that she she's just as a, much of a fighter and has just as much heart as everybody else. Right. And, and a leader of women. Um, you know, I feel like Aang had his moment where, you know, he's this immature person who, you know, avoids responsibility and, and stepping up into the moment. That's how this show starts was him essentially running away uh from who he's meant to be and the season ends with him at the like a, a complete 180 from that him sacrificing his life uh so that others can go on and restore balance and i right. see that that's him accepting accepting that um you know you have your iro and, and zuko moment which we've talked about extensively that is like for me the highlight of the show and uh you know then you see the the hero rise or the villain arc of uh azula and her mastermind and her her kind of really coming into her own building up the suspense of this villain arc for the next season and the downfall of general Zhao. yeah i think that uh i think that about covers it i mean uh i really don't I hate not having a whole lot to talk about, but these, I mean, this is like a familiar, a familiar franchise and you know, the it's, it's not a problem, but it's one of the things that's like, everybody likes to complain. A lot of people get tired of constantly complimenting something that was done well. And so but complaining is fun. So, you know, you, the, the content machine, the way it is, is as much as we like the show, it just makes the, makes our discussion shorter because of that. Cause we're not nitpicking, you know, it's almost like, almost like a taboo to appreciate, uh, anything on, on, online. And as much as I want to change that, I struggle with it too. It's so easy to nitpick and you know, who can catch the, the smallest thing that was wrong uh, that nobody else noticed. But then when they see it, they're like, Oh yeah, that's awful. I'm so glad you saw that. Um, but you know, trying to do the opposite uh, makes for short discussions. Uh, so that's all I got for yeah. avatar. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think a, a 45 to an hour long conversation is, is really all you need for this. This isn't a deep uh, intellectual show. This is a adaptation of a children's show, uh, which like we talked about is an adaptation. So we already know what it's supposed to be. We already know where the story's going. So there is no discussion about where, where are we heading? Where's this story taking us? We already know. Uh, and they're following it pretty close. They might get there in a little bit of a different way, but everything is pretty spot on. Uh, so it's really just comparing it to how do you, how do you feel? Do you feel like they did a good job? Do you not? Um, overall, I would say I really like this show. Uh, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, I feel like it's kind of right there in the middle for me. And I feel like going forward, the next few seasons are going to get better. Um, I'm excited to see what they did in episode one. I think the big thing for me was they caught the essence of the show, which is what's important uh, and, and is a conduit for me to give them my trust uh, moving forward. But they did a lot of things different that uh, kind of sit a little amiss with me, you know, some of the acting. And at the same time, these, these are all kids, man. Uh, they're going to get older. They're all still learning their roles and learning each other, learning the story. They didn't grow up with Avatar like we did. 
So, uh, yeah, I see a lot of potential. Um, but we could very easily sit here and pick this thing to death. But that's exhausting. That's an exhausting way to be. That's where I get uh, my energy from. Yeah. Well, you do that enough with Will at Time. And and I only have the patience to do that at one show at a time. So, <laughs> I, that is know. a that is a good point. I don't even think these kids were alive when this when the animated show came out. Think about no. that. How's that feel? They didn't grow up like talking about that with their friends. Like I remember this was the shit when I was in school. Everybody watched this. Um, yeah, and these these kids weren't even alive. So like, no. Azula capturing the essence of an insane person. Uh, without even, I mean, I, I'm assuming these kids watched the show at some point to prepare for this. Uh, I would hope. Uh, I think it would help them a lot. Uh, I'm I'm a hundred percent certain that the actor that played Sokka did because he nailed it. He did a great job. Yeah, I mean, they're also a bit older too. I think most of the actors are in their twenties. Um, other than Aang, I think Aang is like fourteen. Right. Well, I'm but, I'm yeah. hopeful. They they captured they they got my trust. They got my vote of approval. Uh, I don't think the show has to be perfect, and you're gonna get complaints no matter what you do. So you might as well embrace your your own method and and uh, and lean into it a little bit. I I'm looking forward to like the improvements if they go back and like try to see what the feedback is uh, from a positive perspective. I'd like to see some improvements in dialogue, like the dialogue delivery and maybe some more improvements in like body language and definitely some improvements in the CGI as it relates to like the battles and stuff, because uh, we've got, we've got tough, Toph coming up, and yeah. Toph is Toph fights quite a bit. So I, I so. have faith. I have faith. I remember watching season one of The Witcher, and while it had a ton of good parts to it, it was confusing as fuck. Yeah, with all the multiple timelines and not really understanding everything, they didn't really break it down very clear. Um, and season two of The Witcher was the best season of any show I'd ever seen on Netflix up to that point. Yeah. Um, also, no Stranger Things. Season one was mid. It was okay. wasn't bad. It was a lot like this. Like has its has its uh, redeemable qualities. Has some problems. Uh, a bit boring at times. Um, and then season two kind of like rocked everybody. It, it was. Uh, I have faith with Netflix on season two adjustments. And especially a show like this with already such a big following, such a big production cost, uh, and, and funds going to this show, I really think they're going to put a lot of effort into correcting some things that they got wrong in season one. Um, my only... <clears throat> my only statement about a Netflix series where season two is an improvement would be... Uh, altered carbon i disagree they at least for that show that show they they took everything that was good about season one and threw it in the garbage and uh that's unfortunate so but in general i i agree with you netflix netflix shows you make a good point they they have a a reputation for making adjustments and and executing them well. So hopefully we see it. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to it personally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I want, I want to like this, uh, you know, avatar was a beloved show of my childhood. I don't want to sit here and nitpick everything. I would rather, uh, you know, praise them for doing the good things that they did do and hope that they continue on that path rather than shitting on any effort that they made to actually give me a good product. Right. Um, that just sounds like an uh, ungrateful brat, a spoiled brat, who uh, gets something 80% of what they wanted and is not happy with it because it's not perfect. Like, grow up. <laughs> the world's not perfect. You're not going to get everything you want. Just be be happy with what you do have. And uh, 
you know, maybe if you give a little praise for that, you might get something better in the future. Oh boy, I can't wait till you have kids. I can't wait. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, cause uh, if I'm ever around you and your kids, and I hear you nitpicking something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. tell you. Make sure you look up that stream from March twenty fourth, twenty twenty four, right at the end. That's go, right. go take I'm gonna a look say it at now, it. and I'm gonna say it then. They'll be lucky if they get bread and water. All right, <laughs> that's all they get. All right. So when they get a little Honey Nut Cheerios, a little Fruity Pebbles, they're, they're, it's life changing. They're gonna be grateful you know, for it. Under commit, overachieve. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Well, I thought I thought this was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and uh, you know, hopefully in the future when we get locked into this stuff, we can kind of burn through it a little bit faster. I do feel like uh, we've maybe not you, but I feel like I, I may have lost a little bit of momentum with this show. I also feel like, uh, unfortunately, like doing these streams so far after when you see it, you kind of lose that hype, that energy you get from watching something that's really intense that you that you enjoy. Yeah. Well, I I mean, that that's more like bad timing on our part collectively because we had just started like the Wheel of Time. I think we had gotten to like episode two of season two on the Wheel of Time when Avatar dropped. And that really threw, threw us for a loop because we made the decision to talk about Avatar, had to switch gears. And I was still going through like my learning process of, of video editing and trying to, yeah. you know, trying to dip my toes into like the YouTube, the YouTube world of shorts. And I wasn't expecting to have any success with that. And oh, Lordy, did we? If I, if I had known, um, I would have prioritized Avatar. 100 percent just just because of how the just because of how important timing is for it and yeah. you know i i was so focused on trying to make youtube content uh out of out of season two of the will of time that i wasn't um i wasn't pacing myself well like i i actually was trying to make shorts yesterday and i forgot i didn't have um avatar recorded at all like the show itself so i couldn't put any live <laughs> any live footage in anything and i was like god dang it so yeah. but i you know when we season two drops for avatar and when season three of will of time drops it'll be a lot smoother and a lot easier to to focus and grab it while it's hot especially since uh amazon in particular drops one episode a week right yeah and uh, and we'll also try not to plan a uh, two and a half week break right in the middle. <laughs> that is a another uh, thing that affected, I think, the the timing of our show. You know, like you said, we we started after the show dropped. We weren't prepared. I know you didn't even know the show was really dropping until I started talking to you about it. Right. Um, you know, and, and and it took us a few days to realize what what direction we wanted to go, and uh, yeah, it took us some time to get locked in. But I think uh, you know, like this is all learning process. It has been from the beginning. We've been saying it. You know, we're learning the the do's and the don'ts, and uh, I think that whenever a big show that we really want to focus on hits, you know, we'll we'll be prepared for it. Had the groundwork laid, some ideas in place, and. Uh, yeah. Assuming everything goes great, not not try to have any big massive breaks right in the middle. Uh I mean that's going to be wholly dependent on like what's going on in the real world cuz if yeah. if I need a break, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to burn myself out for the sake of content. Uh, I like yeah, I like talking about it, but that break was needed. For sure. That's uh, that's why I put the keyword try in there and so we yeah. were yeah but uh this was good i'm glad we wrapped up uh another season of something we did so yeah. we've done uh will of time season one and now avatar season one now we can finish season two of the will of time and figure out what we want to do next 
it's going to take us, unless we do two episodes a weekend, it's going to take us uh, like four more weeks to get through, five more weeks to get through Wheel of Time. Sorry, really nothing's dropping for a long time. Uh, Invincible's dropping soon. I don't even, I've never even heard of that show. You never heard of uh, the cartoon show Invincible? No. Oh, no, you're a fan of the boys. My bad. I was getting the... I wasn't mixing them up, but the the raw... Like, the way the shows are... Um, the way the shows feel is similar. I think you'd like Invincible. It's pretty brutal. Um, yeah. And season two is dropping. I definitely want to watch it when it comes out. Yeah. Definitely, for sure. And, uh... I think a show that you would enjoy. I'll definitely take a look at Invincible. Um, I think it's something that you should consider at least look up some, which I know you got the book is Shogun. Um, yeah. I think that is a really complex show and would be fun to go through, but we are running out of time because I'm about to have seen the whole first season. So we're going to miss a lot of those opportunities to, for both of us to kind of break down where we think the story's going. Uh, if that is something that we wanted to do. Um, um, but yeah, we can take a look at some, some different projects. Yeah, I, I still, I do want to go into Shogun, just not right this minute. I have the book and it was kind of like how I felt about Avatar account. We kind of already missed the hype window. So if we do go through it, I want to do it like the right way. If that makes sense. Like I want to make sure if we talk about it, we're not, we're going to make like good content not just fast content and like what i'm really looking forward to is when these follow-up seasons drop is being able to make good and fast content because if we when we see avatar season two and will of time season three and any other show we discuss the second time around it's going to be really really easy for us to talk about like immediately and I should be able to turn out like a week's worth of shorts like the next day like have one ready yeah. that next morning as soon as the as soon as the first episode drops and we talk about it there'll be content out out in the out in the world like the next day and that's that's what I'm really looking forward to like the little bit of success yeah, that the little bit of success that the channels had up to this point has been kind of like I'm just kind of like poking it with a stick you know like do something and seeing what I could do to try to get something to happen and we can we can make stuff happen for sure but anyways I think I'm gonna go uh I'm gonna take me a little break and eat something yeah, I'm going uh, to try to sit down and watch uh, episode four again of Will of Time season two, take some notes. And uh, I don't know, we could talk about maybe some streams early in early in the week. Uh, you know, if that works for us, depending on what your work schedule looks like, we'll uh, see if we can find a time that works for the both of us. Okay. I'm probably going to... Um, I'm contemplating... Um, making some shorts today, uh, but I accidentally got myself hooked on EverQuest, so I'm trying to Shit. get that out of my system nice and fast. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no rush. Or at least pace myself. I was actually about to make shorts when you called me, and I was like, oh, yeah. oh, darn. I guess I'm... <laughs> Oh darn! I Stay can't, I can't, can't make any shorts. Guess I'll do the stream and play some more EverQuest for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I, I do plan on uh, building up that library uh, here soon. Yeah, and uh, that once sounds the, like a good plan. The good thing about YouTube is that I can set sit them in there, and you can look at them before we before we release them. So 
that'll yeah. be a big plus. So like we can, I can work on building the library up and try to get myself ahead a little bit. Like maybe mm -hmm. do all of the shorts from Avatar episode two and some of the other Will of Time stuff that we've been talking about, like build up a nice library of both and then just pick release dates based on, on what we want to do. So, but we could talk about that off stream. No. Oh. All right, man. This was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a good time. We'll, uh, we'll talk soon, man. Yes, sir.